is a horse of a lifetime. Well, firstly, I was just as happy that we were in the race, never mind anything. We sprinted him up the day before and um, he sprinted very well, but he, he knocked himself on his coronet. He wasn't the bravest of horses and if he, he got a, a cut or a scratch, he, he, would be half, he would think he's half dead. Um, on the Saturday morning, you know, I couldn't work him and we just walked him and uh, it swelled up a little bit and um, oh, he, was, he was trotting sore. Then, you know, uh, the next morning, um, we didn't know that he was going to run un un until we took him out and we cantered him on the, on the track and when we cantered him on the track he was sound. Here we go in the long jeans, Hong Kong mile and they're set and ready and they're racing. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we weren't favourite, you know, we were second favourite but uh, um, you know, he, he, he got the ideal draw for him because, you know, he liked to be drawn on the outside and Zach put him into, into, a, into a lovely spot. He's coming, the dragon. Glorious days being tackled by Ambitious Dragon. And the horse of the year, Ambitious Dragon, passed all the vet tests to run, and Ambitious Dragon wins it for Zach Purton. It's what it's about, you know, all the best horses coming coming to, to together, you know, east versus west. That's for us, it's it's the biggest deal. He, he won group ones from 14, 16, 18, 2000. You know, he's just one of those horses that um, is a horse of a lifetime. Ultimately, you know, uh, we got him in class four and we took him to be a two times horse of the year. You know, that it took a lot of satisfaction that uh, we were able to do that. And, um, you know, that as a trainer, you've got to use your skill to actually get there. Feeling of fit is just outstanding. I knew the responsibility I had in my hands. Definitely a very special specimen. He used to be just so big that he nearly didn't fit in, into the gates. It's, it's, it's the grand final. It's uh, when the, the stars have got to perform, and he did just that. Uh, it's a cooling that you feel in this talent, but if you don't have that, that means you don't love horse racing that much. And even if it is pressure, it's what you want to have anyway, because that means you're having something special in your hands, and Abel Friend definitely was a special one. They're off, and Abel Friend jumped out a, better, a little bit better than midfield, but immediately Marrera looking to angle somewhere here on Abel Friend. He's all strung up into the straight. He's got Hannah's goal, and he's outside. Gold fun might be gone here. He's see? a monster of a horse. I know if he did get into a bit of traffic, he could, he could make room. <laughs> the big boy, and uh, I knew Joe would, would find space, and he did. And Big Red is starting to lengthen. All 1,300 pounds of him, and away he goes. Able friend from last has put pay to them quickly. And then when, when he just went past them, he just, there was not even a fight. He just went over the top, ran away, and the feeling of winning that race is just unforgettable. I went out there believing and the horse himself just didn't let us down. He proved himself that he's, he was the best horse in the world. Yeah, he was just a brilliant horse. Horses like them, they have a memory of a lifetime and they still can recognize you. Matthew Chadwick, you know, is having a first ride in the big international race. Matthew is related to the horse, he's associated to the horse. No, no other jockey will know the horse better than the jockey that's been on him all the time. I was so young, I was 21, and it was a great honour to be able to just ride in a race on such a great horse. Like all French horses, they like to come from behind, and this is a typical one of them. But a uh, small horse, you know, under a thousand pounds. But the power of this horse, it seems to be his acceleration. But I remember the time he got boxed in there, I said, you've got to be patient, don't push your way out, otherwise we're going to yeah. get disqualified, or, you know, if he's lucky he's got the acceleration. Yeah. You know? Once you've got the race. acceleration, no, no other horse can hold him in, you know. Well, they we knew. I said once I get open, I had so much in my hands. I knew once I asked him, he was going to let go, let rip. And even to say, well, looking back at the replay, you can, you can get goosebumps when you see it. He's... He hasn't kicked away. California Memory gets his second wind. Erie on the outside, but California Memory got going the last hundred, and California Memory wins it for Chadwick. We were all at the, uh, at the Barrage draw, and. Um... Again, I would, the owner, you, you drew Ali number one again, gate one. I said, wow, we're going to do this again. And everything planned out, even better this time. 
comes California memory. He's quickly descending on the scene, and Chadwick shoots him away at the 150 from Dan Excel. Joffre storming home, but California memory makes it back-to-back -back cup victories and goes into the history books for same. California memory beats Joffre. He had a great impact on my career. Uh, he's taught me a lot. It's, it's too many words to describe. Uh, he certainly smashed a, a world-class field that day and looked very good doing it. Uh, I would put that performance and his performance to start before up there is his two best. Yeah, well, this is the jockey's room. Uh, my seat's over there. It's usually uh, a lot busier on a race day than it is here today. Quite a bit of chat that goes on in the room, um, but the closer you get to the big races, you know, business is, is important and we head out the door and head into battle. I don't get overawed by the occasion. I appreciate the position I'm in and I'm very thankful for that. And in 2017 it was a difficult call, but in the final lead up race in, uh, in the mile trial, uh, Beauty Generation uh, ran just okay. I thought he was a little bit flat and Beauty only ran enormous. It was that race I decided to stay with Beauty only and it was the wrong call. In the 2018 mile I was very confident. Um, I won the Vars early in the day, so obviously uh, the confidence was there. I was feeling good. Now he is. Beauty Generation stepped away fast. Nothing I like more began best and leads Beauty Generation. They're both deep on the course. Uh, a little bit longer than I would have liked to be able to roll to the front, but I wasn't in a hurry. I didn't rush him. I don't like to uh, get too far ahead of myself. Um, but when I come in the straight and I gave him a squeeze, I, I just felt him lengthen. But Beauty Generation at the 150. This is 100% pure group one power. Beauty Generation five in front. Viblos and Southern Legend, he is invincible, Beauty Generation. What a champion he's going to be. What a champion he already is. Beauty Generation wins the mile in an absolute canter. I had a look at the big screen and I just couldn't believe how far I was in front. It is, we work all year um, to try and find a horse that's good enough to be able to compete in these races um, at this level. To, to be given the opportunity is, uh, is fantastic. Oh, lucky nine. Just a star. Courageous, tough, magic horse. It's lovely to see the horses coming in from all over the world to compete against us. But uh, our horses, you know, year in and year out, we've had a lot of horses that can be in the top 20 or 30 in the world, which is a pretty remarkable effort for a, for a small city like Hong Kong. It's a classic case of, you know, when, when he's prepared for a big group one and then he comes out almost proppy out of the gates, but uh, Brett just managed to guide him into a good position. Obviously at the start I was a bit worried, but after they went a furlong and a bit, he was in a good spot, and I knew he'd give us a big shot the, the last part of the race. In front, lucky nine on the outside. I love my horses and I feel, you know, when I think I've prepared one and I think he can win, I'm, I'm obviously very excited. Go on, my son. When it comes race day, I, I like to show my emotions. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And uh, there's nothing wrong with shouting for horses in this game and, and being a bit emotional because that's what horses do for you. Lucky Nine was a horse that had a lot of problems internally, you know, and to, to get him to perform at that level on race day, um, from a trainer's point of view, it's, it's very rewarding. It was just a joy to train him and it was wonderful to train for those owners who were just magic people. My dad, you know, Laurie, was, he was a legend and um, for him to be around at that time when this horse was at his peak, you know, sharing the successes with me. My dad was great, he taught me everything, you know, and um, just when he was around and the horse was producing the goods overseas, it was awesome. Nothing like it. To win a Group 1 for Hong Kong, representing Hong Kong, it, it certainly was a glorious day. It was a big gamble going into that 2013 mile with, without a run. But you know, you, you're running against some of the, the top milers coming from all over the world. It took a while for Johnny Size to, to work out that he was a one-dimensional horse. You know, first up, he just used to produce these explosive turns of foot. They're off in the long jeans, Hong Kong mile, and there's a great line out of the gates, and the favorite gold fun is the first to break it. It wasn't, it wasn't a concern from that perspective that I'd gone a, a long while um, without a winner on International Day. I think the biggest concern was going into the race 
thinking the horse was underdone. There was, there was only one way to ride him. He had to go to sleep. Quickly over into second. Dan excels handy together with Pure Champion and Helene Spirit, real specialist. My plan was to get in onto the back of uh, the likes of Sky Lantern. I was just happy he was sleeping in a matter of five strides. And then all of a sudden I could see Richard Hughes on, on Sky Lantern starting to come off the bridle. And I went, no, not yet, please. You've got to take me further. Goldfun turned for home and kicked. And when I pulled out and I saw him kick, I thought, we're going to run second again. Um, but Goldfun folded and my plan and game plan started to come into play. Without even going for the whip, he started to reel Goldfun in. Knowing that turn of foot that he's got, I didn't go for the stick, I didn't panic. I, I knew I was going to get him. The only equivalent to it, I could say, is if you're sitting in a a really fancy sports car and um, you put your foot on the on the pedal and it gives you that kind of kickback, that real thrust. Anything could have happened but it was a fairy tale ending. Whoever named him a glorious days was a genius. It was just meant to be. Everything worked out perfectly. It's like a like a bad relationship with a girlfriend. Break up and make up again. And pretty early I lost a ride. When he won the International in 2017, I remember watching the International Sprint on the grandstand here. And, you know, when you see a horse that you always have, have a big heart for winning a big race and when you're not on him, it's really a, like, like break your heart. 2018 was, was, uh, was the year, of course, uh, I won the International Sprint. I've committed to ride uh, Mr. Stunning and I knew he was, he was the right horse to be on. It's like Lewis Hamilton getting in his car in a pole position. Yeah, we know that a uh, hot king bond should be usually lead in front, so I just uh, talked to Harris. We just, uh, we, if you can just, uh, that fourth, it's no problem. Right? And if you get the cover, it should be better. And two lengths further back, winner's way, Limbs Cruiser. Sir Dance a lot is last of all. Eye Victory is giving Hot King Prawn the large eyeball as they turn for home 450 metres out. Mr. Once, once I pinged the gate and I knew that half of my job was done. <laughs> I think uh, last 200, uh, when Keras uh, asked the horse, the horse just come strong. Little Giant emerging with Beat the Clock. Mr. Tunning took a slender lead, edging away. Beat the Clock wider out, DB pin. Mr. The first season, I have a, a horse that uh, entered the, for the big ways and then he can win. Amazing day. Hold on a second. Yeah. Um, I want to bring him back in time and I want to ask him a question. Do you remember when I rode him on the, on the leading up race? No, go ahead. Do you remember that? I actually allowed him to be on the inside and he didn't come through. He just got stuck in there. He didn't get held up, but he just didn't perform. He just refused to run for me. Yes, yeah. Were you really going to get me off? Oh, that's too far back, Joe. Just, one, know, just one race before well, the we, international. He ran six. Well, you, went, you came out and won on the international, so I forgave you. Oh, of course <laughs> you were. <laughs> of course you were. As Joe said, uh, the horse's racing style wasn't really to get caught up on the inside. Um, I probably, you know, we're going. I'm going to the race meeting with, you know, my heart rate probably well above what it should be. It's just so important because it's obviously the world is watched. John is mastered to get horses fit at the right time, and he was a hawk fit. For 2014, the Long James Hong Kong Cup. We knew he gets back. We knew he was gonna run home strongly. I just had to manage it properly in a way that I didn't get there too early or not too late. Designs on Rome running on. Archimedes further back, Criterion in front. That military attack descending on the scene. Designs on Rome the outside. He's in for the fight. Wow, they hit the line at Designs on Rome beat him. And already Marrera starting to feel for the favorite Designs on Rome. He's starting to push him along back at the tail of the field. The learning process with horses where to have them and where not to have them. Make a run on the outer and he'd give you 100%. And when, if a horse did challenge you, the jocks always said, um, Joe and, and Tommy Berry always said that when you pulled the whip through to the right hand and gave him a few slaps, he always gave you that extra length. When he was side by side to any horse, 
he would not give up. He, he just used to prick his ear back and give his heart when he was in a fight. So, what a horse. Well, remember the day, Richard? 2013, December. Memorable one, wasn't it? Well, it was a pretty unique day because, um, you know, I woke up in the morning thinking I had a great chance to win two uh, international races. I had, I had gold fun and a keep my feet in the peak of their lives. We'd had gold fun, uh, faced glorious, glorious days. days in the mile, the previous race. Get up to beat Mr. Pan and then having to come face him in the paddock and you a race later. Yeah, so you were on a roll oh, and wow. I was, uh, I was sort of a semi-choking day and I said to you, uh, the only, only way we're going to forgive you is if you win us the, win us the cup. Military attack, let the war begin, the cup's on its way and military attack is in the second half. Passing the 800 when we had Yutaka Taka in front and Sumion just outside me, I was comfortable, um, although you don't want Sumion outside you in any race, uh, let alone a, a Hong Kong Group 1 International Cup. Behind him is Rainbow Sheik. The Japanese... And I went for the rail to run and I, I made one mistake. I shouted, Yutaka! Well, he kind of looked that way and went straight onto the rail, didn't he? Yeah. That was my run gone. He draws away to beat Tokai Halo! Third's a photo between Cirrus de Zerg and military uh, Hong Kong is still pulling in the, the world's elite and, and, and that's why looking back at these films are such fond memories. It'd be lovely to see us racing Sons of a Keeper feet together. To win one of these Longines international races is difficult enough, let alone two. So um, to win the mile uh, and then come out and, and win the cup for Hong Kong, it was a sensational day. Well, it's very exciting. Many people cheer up for you. Our instruction is quite simple to try to be handy. If lead, you will be great. We do exactly what Mr. Mo wanted me to do, and the horse was do everything perfect in the race. He's upcoming horse at that stage, and in, on the big race, not many horses want to lead in the big race. So we have a good opportunity in the beginning, and everything perfect. Wider out contentment flew out of the gates and travelling forward is Horse of Fortune with Beauty Generation. We controlled the pace and we took off at the 500 and straight got the winning post. We didn't spend too much energy in the beginning and he was very automatic. Is looming large, beauty only. Helene Paragon to the middle. Beauty Generation 300 metres out, kicked away. I, I just feel that the winning post is too far away from me. Just want to be her. Fast go to the winning post. Western Express trying hard. Beauty Generation. Western Express, Helene Paragon. Beauty Generation takes the mile. What a thrill for Derek Long on Beauty Generation. For us local jockeys, it's quite, quite hard to get the opportunity for the big race. It's very good for me to step up to other level. It's for me, it's very special years. After winning the big race, after a few weeks, and my first baby was born, just a great month. Aero velocity, what a grand eight year old he is. He takes his second sprint. Yeah, in all the years he raced, he never once doubted his courage. So let's go right back to the start, mate. Um, before Aero velocity came to Hong Kong, yep. I believe he was a hard sell. I hooked more around Hong Kong. A guy called Daniel Young, young guy, rang me up and he said, can we have a coffee? So we had a coffee and I got a horse for you. He was very much an individual horse. How many bones did he break or people's bones did he break? Uh, he broke his strapper's collarbone once. Uh, oh yeah, he banged up a few. Yeah, I've seen him put a few up the fence. It, getting on him was the hard part, but once he got out on the track, all of a sudden, the light bulb would go and he'd just relax and prick his ears and look. And one of the things I loved about him was he's such a big, strong horse. He had a beautiful chest on him. He was like a war horse, so if you needed to bump one out of the way, um, they were never going to win. The aggression he had in the mornings, he'd really put that into his races. And then when they come, he'd pin his ears back and it'd take a good one to get past him. The trio fighting it out. Aero Velocity, he's kicking on the inside. phenophobia has got the job to get him. Aero keeps kicking and Zach Purton takes out the sprint on Aero Velocity. Yeah, in all the years you, you raced, you never once doubted his courage. Nah, he had, to, had it in spades. 
Yeah, well, it, you know, the, that last one was fantastic. It was a little bit of a surprise, but a very pleasant one. One of the greatest moments I've had on a race course is watching the, the post-race vision of the owner when the ho that horse went over the line and won that race, the emotion he showed on his face, it was unbelievable. And I think that was reflective of, of all of us. Um, we thought his, his best may have been behind him. Yeah. And he produced that run, uh, not out of nowhere, but he produced that run from all the courage that he had and threw himself over the line. I saw a video of him at Muskoka Farm in Sydney and he's chasing two two-year-old fillies around the paddock. <laughs> so he's going to grow Good up. luck to him. Oh, certainly I needed him at the time. The thing that'll stick with me is uh, the aggression he put into his races, uh, the courage he showed, and uh, you know, he basically never let me down. He was always there when I needed him. <laughs>